I'll give you a tour. October 2018, and Ashley Cox is beyond excited doing a walkthrough. I just thought it was adorable. And showing off her new living space in downtown Logan. It was a one bedroom and it was within my price range. I wanted to live by myself. She loved the apartment. She loved the location. And she loved the fact staying in this old building was saving her money. What she did not love. I started getting skin rashes, getting a lot of bruises, I started going numb in my hands and my feet. Is everything else that seemed to come along with it, like frequent spasms in her hand, a diagnosed staph infection on her face, neck, and chest, and this video showing Ashley's hair suddenly. So I just ran my fingers through my hair. Coming out in clumps. Mentally, she wasn't doing much better. I was having auditory hallucinations. I was hearing voices, and I just didn't understand what was going on. For six months, this was Ashley's life. And for six months, she didn't have a clue as to what was causing it until her apartment became suspect. I have videos and photos of these iodine crystals growing on my walls. And as I'm Googling what a meth lab looks like, I'm terrified as I'm seeing it right in my apartment. Looking for proof, Ashley hired several professionals who ran a series of tests throughout the apartment. They tested the kitchen, the dining room, the bathroom and bedroom. And the proof she was looking for... It aligned with all of my symptoms, and I was shocked. Well, the proof was all over the apartment. In the state of Utah, one microgram of methamphetamine per 100 square centimeters is considered dangerous. In Ashley's apartment, the meth levels range from 1.2 to 3.8 micrograms. Her home was toxic. The health department shut it down, and she didn't have a clue... This is serious. Yeah. ...before moving in. Yeah, no, this is life-threatening. Dr. Nina Jorgensen is Ashley's physician. She ran a test and found extreme levels of abnormal hydrocarbons in Ashley's system. It's the kind of stuff you'd see from exposure to gasoline fumes, pesticides, and cleaning fluids. The kind of stuff used to make meth. So, the doctor wrote a letter to lawmakers. There's got to be some more rights for... Um, renters. Asking things like who ensures an apartment complex is safe for renters, what recourse do patients have, and finally pleading for corrections in a system that is seriously failing tenants. You believe it's significant enough to have laws changed? Well, after, after what I've been through with two patients now, um, yeah. I wouldn't wish this on anyone. That second patient lived in the apartment directly above Ashley and experienced some of the very same symptoms of toxic exposure. There's, there's no laws regarding that you have to test for meth, period. That's Ann Adkin, a decontamination specialist with Meth Mob who spent years spraying down, scrubbing out, and cleaning up meth homes all across Utah. And she's absolutely right. There are no laws requiring landlords to run a meth test in between renters. There's plenty of people that are living in meth houses that have no idea why would landlords be any different. According to Utah law, the only time a property owner is required to disclose a meth issue is if that owner has actual knowledge that the property is currently contaminated, which means contaminated properties could be changing owners and renters over and over and over again, legally exposing the people living inside to life-threatening toxins. People are moving in and out all the time. You know, you're, you're, you're churning through people. Counties are required to keep a listing of every meth-contaminated house and apartment reported. But the reality is, if it has not been tested, the home could be toxic and nobody knows. In a statement to the KSL investigators, the Utah Apartment Association said, because proper tests are expensive, we recommend tests only be done in cases where there are actual indications that the home might be contaminated. The UAA does not support mandatory testing each time renters move. However, we support testing anytime there is probable cause to suspect contamination. We're not legal experts, we're not property experts. We are scientists. Nathan LaCrosse is an epidemiologist with the Utah Department of Health and says a number of meth labs discovered in Utah has gone down dramatically from 107 in 2004 to just one in 2014. Yeah, so a dramatic decrease, a dramatic decrease, which again doesn't necessarily mean that use has decreased. Now the key word there is use. According to the state health department, meth use remains a large problem in Utah. Individuals seeking treatment for meth represent roughly 28% of all substance abuse treatment program admissions. And that use inside of an apartment like Ashley's. I knew that something was wrong, but no one could figure it out. Is the one thing she did not know. The one thing likely making her sick and the one thing she believes a change in law would have prevented.